the entire North Polar Ice Cap during summer, during some of the summer months could be completely ice free within the next five to seven years. Predictions of severe ice loss, such as this one by Al Gore, have made the polar bear the iconic symbol of man-made catastrophic warming. The polar bear, we are told, is the canary in the coal mine, a current example of the harm that our consumption of fossil fuels is having on the earth and its inhabitants. It's the rare story on bears in the mainstream media that doesn't link man-made warming and shrinking sea ice to declining populations of polar bears and the all but certain extinction of the species unless we act now to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. A recent viral video put out by the National Geographic Society showed an emaciated and dying polar bear struggling to find something to eat and we were told that this is what climate change looks like. What went unreported in the coverage was the fact that the activist photographer and co-founder of radical environmentalist group C Legacy, Paul Nicklin, had spent weeks searching the Canadian Arctic in order to find a thin bear to use in his reporting of starving bears. Unfortunately for him and his mission, nearly all of the bears he found were quite healthy and fat. That he found a dying polar bear should not be a story as approximately 1,000 bears die each year from various causes. This just happens to be one of those nearing the end of its 30 year or so lifespan. So were these often reported facts of a decline in population of polar bears and their looming extinction correct? In this video, we'll take a look at recent population trends and also put it in the longer term context to see what happened during other even warmer periods than we're in today. First, let's take a look at what is happening to polar ice. There's no debate that the northern polar ice has been in decline. It just has. This chart is from NASA and shows data going back to the beginning of the satellite era in 1979, which was the beginning of this extremely accurate measurement technique of gauging the extent of sea ice. While accurate longer term measurements of sea ice is not directly available, its retreat and advance are closely aligned with land-based glaciers and there are good records available for that. This chart shows the summary of records of 169 glaciers around the world and reveals that the retreat started in the early 1800s, long before man started adding significant CO2 to the atmosphere in the mid 20th century. Additional continued warming further into the 21st century will necessarily mean continued retreat of the sea ice. Is this alarming? And does this signal the beginning of the end for the polar bears? According to the Geologic Survey of Norway, their research of beach ridges in northern Greenland indicate that a period of great warming occurred 6,000 to 7,000 years ago and led to an Arctic Ocean that may have been periodically ice-free, or at least one that had much more open water than today. The Arctic was much warmer 7,000 years or so ago, and yet the bears survived. Looking a bit further back, polar bears are thought to have evolved about 150,000 years ago and survived a much, much warmer period during the last interglacial period. Researchers from the Niels Bohr Institute have determined that the most recent interglacial warming period, 115 to 130,000 years ago, was fully 15 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it is today. That is much warmer than even the most extreme projections from the IPCC predict, and the bears did not go extinct. In order to address recent trends in polar bear population, it is very important to realize that it's difficult and dangerous to assess the population of polar bears accurately. Their home turf is a mostly barren, snowy, windswept terrain that's inhospitable to humans, whose census taking bears do not really welcome. Also, humans apparently taste a lot like seal, or enough so that we are on the polar bear menu. Despite these challenges, the most recent population studies indicate that polar bear populations are rising and are at a 50-year high. The most recent study on Canadian polar bears reveal that their populations are either stable or increasing in five of the eight assessment areas where reliable data was available. A 2017 report by Susan Crockford, a noted polar bear expert, reveals that the current population of about 28,500 is the highest estimate in more than 50 years. By far the greatest factor in the increase in their population 
was the international ban in 1973 on trophy hunting. Now, only hunting by the native Inuit or on trophy hunts led by them are allowed. Additional excellent reporting on the subject can be found at her website, Polar Bear Science. Comparing the declining sea ice extent with the increasing population over the last nine years show that, contrary to what Al Gore or National Geographic may have to say, we haven't seen any negative effects on polar bears yet from the decline of sea ice. Karen Rode of the USGS set out to compare bear health in areas of high ice loss in the Chuchi Sea adjoining Russia to an area with low ice loss in the Beaufort Sea near Alaska. The results of this effort were extraordinarily inconvenient for those pushing the notion of polar bears in trouble due to sea ice declines. She found that by every metric, the bears in the high ice loss area were healthier, fatter, had more cubs, and the cub survival rate was higher as compared to the bears in the low ice loss area. She determined that the bears had moved onto land for part of the year and there were more critters to eat. Her concluding slide was illustrative of the problems this result gave to her and her colleagues. How in the world do we message this to the public? Current population trends are pointing up and our look at the history of ice loss shows that these noble creatures survived in times of much greater ice loss than is predicted for the coming decades. So, rest easy. Polar bears are doing just fine, thank you.